Hello, and welcome to another episode of the New 151 Spotlight. If you're already familiar with this project, you can use the chapter markers to skip ahead. But if you're new, here's a quick introduction. The New 151 is a project that my friend Infinipede and I started back in 2016. We wanted to mark the 20th anniversary of Pokémon by redesigning every Kanto Pokémon. We tried to update the designs to better match modern Pokémon design trends, and generally improve the things we didn't like about them. For almost half the project, we worked on the designs on stream, accepting input from viewers. We had another friend, Banana Meteor, join us as a collaborator, and we finally completed the project last year. All of the designs are posted on our Tumblr page, new151.tumblr.com. In this video series, we recap our old designs and reflect on how we feel about the results now that we've had some distance. This episode is entirely about the five fossil Pokémon from Kanto. Ammonite and Amastar, Kabuto and Kabutops, and Aerodactyl. Infinipede took the lead on all these designs, and they had some overarching thoughts on how to approach the whole set, so we'll begin there. There's not really a good reason that the fossils should be rock-type, given the original designs. You could make an argument for Omanyte and Omastar. It's like, oh, they have shells, so it's something like Magcargo, where Pokemon has shell equals rock. Uh, I don't personally think that makes a lot of sense, considering there's a lot of Pokemon who have exoskeletons who are not rock-type, and a lot of Pokemon with shells that are not rock-type. Especially when you look at Aerodactyl, there's absolutely no reason Aerodactyl should be a rock-type with the original design. My design philosophy was I wanted to go with the premise that these Pokemon are Rock-type because they've been revived from uh, fossils. So I wanted to take a piece of the maybe the stone they were revived from and put it on the Pokemon somewhere. I picked a different type of rock, a quote-unquote rock, because Aerodactyl has the old amber, uh, for each of them to put on the Pokemon. So first one was Ammonite and Amistar. Was there something about the originals that you wanted to change Aside from that? I think I just wanted to make them look less similar, for one. So I picked a different type of uh, Ammonite shell or Omastar. Omanite, as its own design, is fine, minus the complaint about the rock. I think it's cute. Omastar, again, my two complaints were it just looks like a bigger Omanite with more tentacles. And its mouth is, I don't think it's something Pokemon would do today. It's like Pinsir's mouth, where it's kind of like, this is a bit creepy. <laughs> So I used amylite, which is an opal-like uh, material that forms on the fossils of ammonite shells. Yeah, they're kind of iridescent, right? So that's why we went with the rainbow coloring. Yeah, I mean, it's the best we can do without using, like, you know, in heavy gradients and whatnot. So people were calling it the pride ammonite, which I'm okay with. We maybe moved some of the, uh, the amylite around, but... I really don't think it was changed much. Oh, I love them. I'm completely fine with them. This is definitely, and I'm going to say this for all of the fossils, I think they're very successful. <laughs> Thank you. Both as just like improvements on the original and as a modern approach to the same kind of concept. They work really well. Changing over to Kabuto and Kabutops. My big thing was with... Kabutops, it always felt weird that we had a Scythe Pokemon named Scyther with scythes. And then you got Kabutops, who also just has scythes. It makes Kabutops and Scyther both feel a little less special, I suppose. It also gives the kind of impression that they are related. Yeah. Which they don't appear to be by any other measure. Yeah, that's a, another thing about the size that has always bothered me, and I couldn't really put it into a... But it, it does give the impression that they're somehow, yeah, related. I just kind of changed them into claws. They're also based on a type of uh, samurai sword that, well, blade, um, that was also used by the Japanese police. Kabutowari? Yeah, it's like a small sword or dagger with a second small blade sort of jutting out to catch other weapons. And you definitely, for Kabutops especially, you definitely lead into the uh, samurai armor aesthetic. Oh yeah, because I mean, Kabuto is the, the helmet. So the rock is pyrite, and we leaned into for the coloration just because I think the yellow gold is more interesting than 
what you see a lot of pyrite is kind of silver. But pyritized fossils are fairly common, and you can find pyritized trilobites. I've actually, I've not found trilobites, but I found uh, pyritized uh, crinoids, so lilip and cradley, <laughs> at a local fossil hunting spot. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they look really cool. I'm still very happy with them. I think they make the whole samurai idea more obvious than just the name. I think that gives sort of a Kabutops an identity of its own, aside from just kind of like looking vaguely like Scyther. I really love the way Kabuto looks. I think the kind of pyrite piece on the front that almost gives it like a muzzle if you're looking at it from above. I love the way that looks. Yeah, I feel like Kabuto maybe changed a little bit more in a strange way, even though I feel like Kabuto is a design that works very well on just a regular level. Just the original is fine. I think it's cute, but I wanted to just give it a little little bit extra. Awesome. And my favorite... Aerodactyl? Aerodactyl is really plain in a way that I don't think would fly, haha pun, not intended, today as a design. Like, if you look at Mega Aerodactyl, this is obviously a design they kind of wanted to add a little bit extra to. I wanted to give it, you know, a little bit more of the, this is how we see dinosaurs today versus when this the original game came out. You know, just a little bit different colors, a uh, little bit of fuzz. The blue patch under the eye, I believe there's at least one uh, pterosaur species who has that shown in like a lot of modern paleo art of it. It has that like eye patch. So I'm curious if maybe that's where they found like something on a fossil that would show that this animal had a uh, different skin texture or different color there. But I wanted to, again, give it the quote-unquote rocks, in this case the old amber, as part of its design because there's no reason it should be rock type in the original. Aerodactyl's like, I have my grapes with it, but the body shape is fine, you know? My original had most of the body encased in amber because I thought it would be kind of cool if he was like breaking out of the amber, like you could see his wings and his legs and his head coming out. But we decided to change it to just that sort of heart-shaped piece in the center with the uh, the mosquito or the fly or the insect inside, which that was your idea. That was really cool. Thank you. Maybe that's why I like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> but it the wings and the head and the tail and the legs not changed much from my original design. They're just not inside the amber anymore. This one's probably actually my least favorite, but I think it's just from my my arthropod loving bias <laughs> and my gastropod loving biases. I like invertebrates more. <laughs> but Aerodactyl, he's fine. He's good. I think he's a he's a fun design. I love the little insect and his little fuzz and his little amber spikes and stuff. So he's he's cool. To me, well, one I think the colors really add a lot. Because I think that's the main kind of issue with the original. This just gives it a lot more pop. It makes it look more like a modern video game creature in general, but I think especially a Pokemon. And I love the way that the Amber, they call back to Mega Aerodactyl, but they're not as exaggerated because I don't really like Mega Aerodactyl because I think it's too much. And I think this uses those design elements in just the right amount and in just the right places to actually be successful. And I also like that it has superhero vibes. It definitely does. It looks like a Pokemon superhero. That's all for today. So please let us know in the comments what you thought of our redesigns of the Kanto Fossil Pokemon. There are only two more episodes left to go in this series, and they should both be coming out in the next couple of months. Thank you for watching. Before I go, let me take a moment to tell you about this other project of mine, Rate Pokemon. It's a website where you can rate each Pokemon design on several criteria, see how your ratings compare to the average, and explore the resulting data in many different ways. We already have a great data set, but the more people contribute, the better it will be. Go to ratepkmn.com to learn more and start rating. If you want to support my work as these lovely people do, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below or leaving me a tip on Ko-fi. Either way, I appreciate your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next chapter.